So I got a laser cutter and I'm going to show you how I'm going to be using it in my workshop to help with design work along with other things. So let's get started. So this is the beam box and is made by a company called Flux and was supplied to me from another company called Matter Hackers. They happen to be based in the US and sell a ton of stuff for 3D printing like different filaments, resins, and 3D printers themselves, along with laser cutters and CNC routers. As you can tell, this is fresh out of the box and still needs to be set up, so I'm going to do that right now. And just about everything you need is packed inside of the laser. It does look like this was moving around during shipping and got a little messed up on the box, but it should be fine. And the first thing we find in the box is a decently thick user's manual. This box is also attached to the laser head, and it probably just moved around a bunch during shipping. That's how we got that hole in the top. So let's get everything out of this box so I can get it off the laser head. First up are some nuts, washers, and some dampeners. An ethernet cable. A ring clamp for the exhaust tubing. A funnel for filling the machine with water. Some masking tape to help you align the laser. A standard power cable for a computer. A USB Wi-Fi dongle. That looks like it has some damage on it, but it shouldn't affect anything. A tiny piece of wood for testing. Some silica packets to keep moisture out. And a little bit of machine oil. And the exhaust tube is zip tied to the back, so you just need to cut the zip ties to get it out. And this is compressed, so if you pull on it, it will stretch out to be pretty long. Assembly of this machine is really straightforward. For instance, the lid dampeners go in with no tools. The acrylic that comes with this needs the paper removed from it, and it goes on with just a couple washers and nuts. And with all of that installed, you can now close it, and the dampeners will stop it from hitting metal on metal. So according to the instructions, the next thing I need to do is add water to this, and it needs to be distilled water. You only have to remove one screw on the back to get to your laser tube and to the filling port for your water. If you're setting one of these up, just follow the instructions in the manual, but there is a small panel on the side that you can remove so you can see exactly where your level is for the water. This way you just don't overfill it or underfill it. There was one other thing I had to do to get the laser working properly, and that was adjusting the laser mirrors. They got out of alignment and shipping, and this isn't the hardest thing in the world to do, and this is probably why they send the thing a tape, so you can adjust everything. Just follow the instructions in the manual, but for the most part, you're blocking off the little port that goes to the mirror, so when you shoot the laser, it'll burn a spot and it'll tell you where it's hitting, and you adjust accordingly. Last thing I need to do before I can start a test print is move this little acrylic piece down and make sure it touches the material I'm going to be cutting. And if it's not touching, I can raise or lower the bed using this little knob. And that's basically all you have to do to adjust the focal length and just flip the little piece out of the way. So what I'm going to be doing is an engraving test. This basically goes through different speeds and powers and will show you on a material what it does to it basically. And you can use this as a reference card, so when you use this material again, you can know exactly what you need to set your settings to. And they also have one of these for cutting as well. And this only takes about 20 minutes to finish. And as you can see, it has different depths to everything, along with a different color to each burn. But it looks like the cutting edge on the outside didn't go quite all the way through, so I was able to break it off, and you can see that it leaves a little bit of a black line around it. And here's a good example to why you want to test your materials. So you know what will ruin it and what will work to your liking. So I previously did a video on a 3D printer that has a laser attachment. And it will engrave onto wood, but it is extremely slow and not very detailed. For instance, this took about 5 hours to engrave on this piece of wood using that machine. So I thought I would test out an actual laser cutter and see how it does. So this took about 11 minutes, and in my opinion came out much better with more details and none of these weird lines that the other one left. The software for this printer is pretty easy to use, it's a lot of drag and drop and just moving stuff around. One really interesting thing that I like is that it has a camera built into the laser head that will go around and scan your bed so you can accurately place things on your material. So all you have to do is highlight where you want it to scan, and it will go through and take pictures of each little spot. It also has some very basic editing tools that will allow you to resize, crop, and sharpen your images. But for the most part, you're going to want to make your images outside of this program using something like Inkscape or Illustrator. 
One other cool feature of this program is you can tell it to trace what you're working on. So you can basically follow the lines of it instead of going a line by line, kind of like a printer would go. This is much faster and with the right settings, it'll cut out the pieces so you'll end up with something that has voids in it. This is also a layer based program, so you can make multiple layers and each layer can have its own settings. So say if you wanted to engrave something, you can engrave it all first and then tell it to cut out around the outline of it so you'll have a perfectly cut piece. I really don't have to do this seeing this is going to cut onto paper, but it's just an option so you know. So you might be thinking that's cool and all, it can cut paper into really detailed designs, but I don't really want to do that and I just want to make jewelry. Well, you can make custom textures using this using paper. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the paper I'm cutting here is not just normal printer paper. This is actually cardstock, so it's a bit thicker and it will be able to hold up to a rolling mill for at least one design. I'm going to be using this copper sheet to show you how I do it. You can use gold, copper, brass, or silver as well, as long as you anneal them. And all I need to do is line up the pattern on the metal and put it into the rolling mill. Once it's in there, I'm going to tighten it down onto the metal and then back it out. With it out, I'll tighten it up just a tiny bit more and then I can roll it all the way through. And here we go, you can see that the metal took on the pattern of the paper and it looks pretty good. So to make it pop a little bit more, I flattened out the metal and added a patina to it. So you can see how the design looks and get a better feel for it. And seeing that this is paper, you can cut out smaller designs so it fits with what you need, and you can place them in any orientation you want. And when it comes to the designs that you want to use, your imagination and your ability to make them is basically the limit. You can also make your own custom signs, decorations, you can even build things using this. It really just depends on what you want to do. I even tried engraving some pictures of my dogs, but it looks like I need to mess with the settings a bit more seeing that there's not much contrast in them. You do need to keep in mind that with a laser cutter you're burning material, so you're making smoke, and you can't laser engrave everything. Some stuff will put off toxins. So make sure that you know what you're cutting and it falls under this stuff that is safe to cut. They do offer a filter that goes with this so you can basically have your room closed off and filter it through this. But this is a $900 filter, so a little bit pricey. And the replacement filter for it is about $200, so it can be a little pricey. But if you can, you can vent directly outside as well. And since we're on the topic of price, this laser cutter and engraver comes in at a little over $4,000 which is a lot of money for a tool. And this isn't the biggest or smallest laser that they have. They have one that is a bit smaller and not as powerful, but it's $2,300. And they have their pro version, which is much bigger and has a stronger laser that comes in around a little over $5,000. And honestly, I don't see a lot of hobbyists buying one of these unless it's the cheaper one or you have something that you absolutely need this for. I see a lot of people that are starting up a business of some sort getting these because there is a ton of things you can make with them, but there's a lot of upfront costs as you can see. I can also see these being really useful for people that make cosplay. Just go onto Etsy and search anything laser related and you'll see tons of listings for all sorts of things, including files for you to even use for yourself. So this was just more or less an overview of what this can do and just give you an idea. And I already have ideas for future videos using this. So if you want to see those and be alerted, subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. And if you found this video helpful whatsoever, leave a like. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.